Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the method of salt preparation known as precipitation. This method is specifically used to prepare insoluble salts, so therefore knowledge of your solubility table is important. Before we go on, you might be thinking, why is it that some salts are soluble while others are insoluble? Have you ever wondered why? It has something to do with how strong the electrostatic forces of attraction are between the oppositely charged ions. So look at this animation for example. We have an ionic compound and surrounding it is water. In order for the compound to dissolve, the ions must first overcome the electrostatic forces of attraction between them before they can be separated and surrounded by the water molecules. So when we say an ionic compound is insoluble in water, we can think of it as the oppositely charged ions are more strongly attracted to each other than to the water molecules, and therefore they rather stick together in a giant ionic lattice structure as opposed to being dispersed throughout the solution. Let's say we wanted to prepare the insoluble salt silver chloride. Precipitation involves mixing two aqueous solutions, one containing the cation and one containing the anion that you want. So the moment you mix both of them together, they will meet, the ions will start colliding, all right, and the silver ions will start being attracted to the chloride ions, and they will form a precipitate. This precipitate settles, and it can be filtered by filtration. Here's what's happening at the molecular level. We have the two solutions, silver nitrate and sodium chloride. Remember that our ions are constantly moving, when we mix them together, we could have collisions between silver ions and nitrate ions, sodium ions and nitrate ions, sodium ions and chloride ions. These three collisions do not result in any reaction. So the ions do not associate to form an insoluble salt. However, the collision between silver ions and chloride ions result in the formation of a precipitate because of the strong electrostatic force of attraction that draws the ions together. So the moment this happens, more and more ion pairs will start associating and then it builds up into a giant ionic lattice structure as shown here. We can then filter away the precipitate of silver chloride. If we want to prepare silver chloride, it doesn't matter what is the solution over here as long as it provides chloride ions and it is soluble. This means besides using sodium chloride, I can use potassium chloride, I can use calcium chloride, I can also use maybe even copper 2 chloride. And I can also use acids, for example hydrochloric acids, because all these solutions provide me with the chloride ions and when they meet with silver ions, they will join together to form the precipitate. Okay? So there is always more than one answer when it comes to uh, salt preparation in terms of what we want to use. I'm now going to show you a demonstration, and we are going to use the predict, observe, explain thinking routine. I'm going to mix different combinations of solutions. Here, sodium sulfate, barium nitrate sodium sulfate, silver nitrate, and so forth. In each pair that I mix, I would like you to predict whether a reaction will occur or not. Pause the video and think about this before I show you the results. Okay, over here we are going to carry out the demonstration. Okay, let me start by pouring some sodium sulfate into this beaker and also some over there. Also going to add some sodium chloride into the beakers at the bottom. Okay, what do you think will happen if I were to add barium nitrate into the first beaker? A white precipitate is seen. Do you think we'll observe the same thing? When we add silver nitrate to sodium sulfate, no precipitate is formed, there is no observable change. If we add barium nitrate to sodium chloride, there is also no visible reaction.
And for the last one, when we add silver nitrate to sodium chloride, a white precipitate is seen. In order to decide whether or not a reaction will occur, we can list down the ions that are present in each solution. So here they are. In the first one with this combination of ions, barium ions can react with sulfate ions to form a precipitate of barium sulfate. So what do we observe? We observe a white precipitate. And the reason is because barium sulfate is formed and barium sulfate is insoluble. Over on this side, there are no combination of ions that can give something that is insoluble, so we have no visible reaction here. Over to this example, there is also no combination of ions that can combine together to form an insoluble salt, so therefore no visible change. And finally, with this set of ions, silver ions and chloride ions can react to form an insoluble salt of silver chloride, so we also see a white precipitate. Do you get this right? So over to our notes. When we do precipitation, we choose two aqueous solution as the starting materials, one containing the cation, one containing the anion. Once we mix them and the precipitate is formed, we can filter it off, rinse the precipitate and then dry it. The example shown here is for the preparation of barium sulfate. The chemical equation is given to you. Okay, for the ionic equation, give it a try and I'm going to write the answer in a while. So please check your ionic equation over here. Now we go over the procedure of how to carry out precipitation reaction. We start by adding about 50 cm cube of barium chloride solution into a small beaker. This volume doesn't really matter. Okay, we will mix our second solution in, in excess, and stir until no more precipitate form. This is to ensure all the barium chloride is reacted. It doesn't matter which one we add to which, we can reverse the order, it's perfectly okay. The next step, you are going to filter the mixture to obtain the precipitate. Okay, then wash the precipitate with a small amount of cold distilled water. This step helps to remove any impurities. And we dry the precipitate between sheets of filter paper because filter paper is highly absorbent. Now, is it possible we prepare barium sulfate using the reaction of an acid and a carbonate? For example, would it be possible to make barium sulfate by reacting barium carbonate with sulfuric acid? Now, there's a problem over here because barium carbonate itself is insoluble in water. The product barium sulfate is also insoluble. So what's going to happen, if I can zoom in, is that initially there will be reaction between the barium carbonate and sulfuric acid around the surface of the barium carbonate solid. Okay, and you form barium sulfate here. The barium sulfate is formed, is also in the solid state, and it coats the starting material which is also in the solid state. And this coating, the insoluble coating, will prevent further reaction between the acid and the carbonate. So whenever we are dealing with an insoluble salt, you cannot start with a starting reagent that is insoluble. It's something you need to bear in mind. So insoluble salts, right, can only be prepared by precipitation. So we say that the product barium sulfate being insoluble forms an insoluble coating around the starting material which is barium carbonate, preventing further reaction from taking place. Now let us practice. Pause the video, give it a try and we'll go over the answers. When it comes to precipitation, a very simple rule to remember is that let's say I want to prepare a salt like silver chloride, I'm going to split it into two. One solution must contain the silver ions, so we must use silver something. And the second solution that we use must contain chloride ions, so we use something chloride. Both solutions must be soluble, so bear in mind your solubility rules. So because all nitrates are soluble, I love to use nitrates here. Okay, and sodium chloride would be an easy choice because all sodium salts are also soluble. So back to here, if we want to prepare lead 2 chloride, we can use lead 2 nitrate. 
and sodium chloride. Are there possible alternatives for this? Yes, of course. We can use calcium chloride, we can use potassium chloride, we can even use hydrochloric acid. Any solution containing the chloride ions will work. Okay, second one, we have gone over that already. For the third one, we can also use magnesium nitrate and sodium carbonate. Okay, so you notice how I split up the two ions. Okay, question two. Which of the following can be added to dilute sulfuric acid to prepare lead 2 sulfate? So you read the question. Preparing this, we always remember whether it's soluble or not. So this is insoluble. That's the first thing we look at. So insoluble, straight away we use precipitation. And precipitation reaction involves using two aqueous solution. So this is aqueous solution number one, it contains sulfate. Aqueous solution number two must contain lead two ions. And we can and we have to choose nitrates because all nitrates are soluble. So that, that's all we have for this segment of precipitation. Thank you all for watching.